Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys doing? So my name is Kevin Tayabali. I'm one of the founders of Change Now. We're delighted to have you with us today for the first day of the sixth edition of the Change Now Summit. And this session is going to be quite different. We're going to hear from uh, two amazing, amazing athletes. But first of all, I just want to share a few words of, of what we're doing, why, the reason why we're talking about sports today. You know, when we started Change Now, <laughs> the vision behind it was that if we want to tackle the UN goals, if we really want to shift our models, we need to change the system, and it takes a lot of energy and intelligence, but we also need to use all the people that have levels of influence, and we need to touch people's hearts, emotions, to make that shift. This is the reason why we have so, so many things happening with arts, because art can change the world. Art can change people, and people then change the world. And for us, since the very beginning, sport is an was an incredible level of change as well. Through sports, you can convey very important messages, you can convey values, you can share purpose with a very large amount of people. So this is the reason why we launched last year the Sport for Change program with Paris 2024, which aims at accelerating the sustainable and inclusive transition of the world through the level of sport, and at the same time, helping the sport industry get also at the level of the issue that we're facing so become also even more responsible. So this afternoon, we're going to talk a lot about sports. And for the first session, we're going to talk about sport with purpose. And we're going to hear from two people that have been the first to launch what we call a club with purpose, which is the case of the Asvel Féminin Club, which was the first club in France to put in the, in the status the fact that it's a club with a mission. And we'll see, we'll, we'll try to understand how is this affecting the way the, biz, the, the club is being run. So without any further ado, I'm very pleased to welcome with us this afternoon uh, Marie-Sophie Obama and Tony Parker on stage. Welcome. Welcome to both of you. So, Marie-Sophie Obama, you're a, pro, you're a former professional player, and you're the deputy president of the Asvel Feminine Club. And so welcome here this, morning, this afternoon. Thank you. And Tony Parker, you're a, a retired NBA player. I'm not going to list your achievements because we only have 25 minutes, so uh, it will take all the time. But uh, you're now uh, an entrepreneur and the owner of the Asvel uh, Club. So, uh, first of all, the first thing I want to say is congratulations on winning the European Cup and the French League. Thank you. I was actually watching on Monday evening, I was very tense because it was a very tight game. You watched the game? I was watching the game and I was, you know, I was supposed to be working to prepare this event, but <laughs> I was actually watching the game. And it was so tight, uh, but congratulations, it's, uh, it's an amazing achievement. First question to you, what can we wish for the club, for the feminine club? You, you've won everything this year, what's the next step? What's, what's going to be a good season next year? Uh, but first of all, I was so happy, uh, so happy for the girls, uh, so happy for my, for my big sis, because that's our color. Uh, we grew up together and we always uh, imagined to, to own a, a, a women's team and uh, uh, the way that it happened and, um, and since we started uh, six years ago, uh, it was just a nice accomplishment. And uh, for me, it's different because as a player, you know, you live differently uh, when you win a championship as a player and as an owner. And so as an owner, I'm more uh, like a, a step back, you know, and you look at everybody uh, uh, enjoying themselves and being so happy. So it's a great feeling. And uh, hopefully we can keep it going. Uh, it's something that is important uh, to us because I started with the men's team. Uh, in 2014, I bought the men's team, and then 2017, the women's team. And uh, for me, it's a, it's a way to, to give back to, to uh, women's sport. Uh, it's a way for me to fight for uh, uh, equality for men and women. Uh, as an ambassador of United Nations, it's something that I do on a daily basis. And, uh, and so I think it's something that's important because uh, we have a, a long way to go for uh, someday uh, that the women are treated the same uh, as the men. That's a very strong message. 
And uh, so, so I hear that you're as involved in the Asvel Feminin Club as with the French club, the male club. Men's club, yeah. The men's yeah. club. And so my question to you is, uh, we know that uh, gender equality is at the center, at the core of the mission of the Asvel Feminin. Yes. So it's can you tell us? It's yeah. one of our main uh, objectives. Uh, but why I'm so involved yeah. is because That's I can see the difference when I negotiate a contract for the men's team and when I want to try to negotiate a contract for the women's team. It's always way more for the men's. So yeah. what we decided to do is now if you want to invest in the men's team, you have to invest in the women's team. And it has to be like the same amount. And so we're very lucky and blessed that our main sponsor uh, is called LDLC. Say hi to Laurent, is the CEO. We started that, that trend that we started with the men, it was a huge amount, and with the women, it was not the same, you know? And as we were talking and try to uh, work on that movement to treat everybody the same, uh, we started that process that now, when a, a man wants to come, he has to invest in the women's team and it has to be the same amount. You can't put like, let's say, a million in the men and only 50,000 in the women. It has to be like the, the same amount. And so they're putting the same amount? Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and he's unbelievable because obviously, like I said, we have a long way to go with women's sports because, you know, uh, it's not making as much money right now. But when I see the arena on Monday, Monday night when we won the championship, it was packed. If you told me three, four years ago that we will have 6,000 people going crazy like that for a women's team, I'd be like, that'd be tough to do. And it was packed on Saturday, Monday, packed arena, and uh, everybody was supporting our women's team. So it's the way you do it, it's the way you promoted it, and, uh, and she's unbelievable the way she carries, you know, the, that woman project. And uh, I'm very happy that now, today, even the ownership group who's invested in the men's team, everybody wants to invest in the women's team now. Like that, they do both. And so we're starting, I think, something special now. Thank you, Tony, for this. So, you know, directing to you, uh, Marie-Sophie, so can you tell us a little bit more on the, on the women's project? Yes, like uh, Tony said, you know, uh, gender, gender equality is very important for us. And uh, of course, we wanted to develop women's <laughs> basketball, but we want, wanted also, <coughs> sorry, that the sports plays, uh, plays uh, its role, you know, in, in the society. Um, because, you know, we are facing challenges that we have never seen before. And, and sport is the perfect tool to uh, embrace and to address uh, those challenges. So we decided to, uh, like, build a new model. And, uh, and today, you know, sport and winning championship, providing emotion, like uh, Tony said, is very important. But also, you know, the social impact and our social uh, commitment is very important. And it's all about uh, gender equality for us. So let me understand. So the project is you've, you've put in the statute of the company, the Asvel Feminin, the fact that the Asvel Feminin is a club with purpose. Am I right? Yeah. So what can you tell us what is the difference between, I would say, a club with certain values, with strong values, and a club which puts in a status that it has a mission, which is to fight for gender equality? What does it change? I mean, when you put that in the statues, you have to elevate, you know, the social mission at the same level as the sports mission. And we say we want to win, but we want to win in our way, you know, like fully. When you are a lead purpose company, you have to be aligned. Your value, you know, are your guide. And, uh, and it comes from, you know, uh, the way we manage or the way also the, the girls, they play on the court, like they need to, uh, you know, behave like uh, they are captain of their lives. That's our mission. Uh, the way we involve, like Tony said, the, the sponsor. And sometimes we uh, also take the freedom to choose the sponsor. You know, if we are not aligned um, and we all need that the sponsor, they embrace the same challenges. Um, so if we are all together in the same, same page, that's the way we're gonna accomplish our mission. Being champion, but also allow each, uh, each girl to uh, realize uh, her dreams and be the captain of her life. I love the fact that you're, do you wanna expand on that, tell me? No, no, uh, I was like the, the first time she talked to me about, you know, the Entreprise à Mission and, uh, and we became the first Entreprise à Mission uh, in women's sports. 
uh, I, I like the, the slogan that be captain of your life and you know take charge of your life because in my experience and, and I just want to share something a little bit like personal is is every woman has the potential to do something special and they as good maybe better uh, than men and so I will always remember when I called her in 2016 I called her and I was like we need to do the women's team it's, it's time you know uh, I'm gonna buy it and uh, I don't want to do that project without you like if I'm gonna do that project uh, let's do it together and so I will always remember she's like okay so like what's gonna be my position I said you're gonna be the president you know president of the, the team and then she looked at me like crazy I was like I can't be president I'm like why like but I can't be president I'm like why because you're a woman I'm like no you're gonna be president I don't care that you're a woman we need more president women and we need more people like you to take charge of your life and have confidence you know and so I always remember our first like meeting you know with sponsors and partners she was so nervous and, and stressed and like and today. when I and, and when I see her evolution like six years after now she's like way better than me on speeches and presidents and sponsors like like she really really improved and took confidence in herself and so for every girl that we help with our project and with the academy we want to make sure they have confidence on themselves and they can do as good uh, than men and so I always say that at the academy I always say that to all the kids you know we work with as they always dream big you know dream big and uh, I always say that if you say your dream to somebody and uh, he's not laughing at you you're not dreaming big enough. Mm. And so we want our girls to dream big. You know, when we were preparing this session, Marie-Sophie uh, didn't want to speak on stage, so I'm so glad that you did. Can we have she, a round she's of, great. of applause uh, she's for Marie-Sophie? She, she, you know, she, she didn't want to do well. it because it was in English, you know. <laughs> By the way, I told her just before we started, I was like, first of all, in France, we're terrible in English. Nobody speaks English in France. You know, we may be the worst so country, accent. maybe the worst country uh, for languages. So I'm like, don't worry, your English is great. We don't care about the accent. <laughs> ah, she's doing good, huh? I was Thank focused you. on my accent. Thank you. I told her to say my accent sucks. Um, so <laughs> let's talk about the model concretely. You know, so you're a club with a purpose. What does it mean in the way you work with your partners? So I understand that besides, you know, uh, selling tickets to the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the games, which is really important, and we saw on Monday night how, you know, a room that is packed can influence the game itself. But uh, besides that, how do you work with your partners? What, what, what do you bring to them? Well, we involve them in, we have four teams, you know, the first one, and Tony explained, is the body and mind positivity, so how to know better ourselves, you know, and gain the, for the women, uh, to, to gain the, the self-confidence and be able to break the, 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 the glass ceiling, because that, that's the point, you know, if he hadn't pushed me, maybe for sure I would still live in the southwest of France and selling houses because I was a real estate agent before, you know, so that's, that's the first thing, and when you, you are are confident enough then you're able to uh, achieve your dreams um, the second one is um, growing through sports and um, to be able you know to work with the young generation the future generation and um, and break and fight against all the stereotypes um, for example now lucky us you know we have a very uh, famous soccer player with a female you know but before that it was complicated um, so this inspiration and the role model we can bring thanks to the sport to the young generation is very important to fight and to be uh, close to them and also encourage uh, little girls um, to, um, to practice sports because that's the way you know when you achieve something when you achieve something on the field then you take this and you're able to achieve other things the, the dreams you know out the field or in your life in general and the, 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 the third one is um, uh, women's entrepreneurship because we definitely need the women to say yes, yeah, go to ent entrepreneurship. Yes. It's very important. And to be able to have successful, uh, uh, like raise funds uh, su successfully, it's very important. And uh, the last one is the, um, the feminization uh, of um, mm -hmm. the management in the, in the companies, in the organization, in the exec teams. You know, it's uh, okay, it's very important to have this balance. And we have, you know, at the first level, a lot of women, but you know, once you, you climb the, yeah, there's a glass you, climb, uh, you climb the ladder, 
<laughs> then you know it's only about uh, maybe the first uh, level you have 50% and then 25% and when you reach the exact, exact team you have maybe one or two uh, two percent so it's very important thanks to our program to go in the companies to help you know um, uh, women employees with uh, high potential to say yes like, like the, on the same way he did with me um, we we have this program we call the captain uh, of your life program and we, we we can do that with them we go in the school you know and uh, to to uh, also uh, uh, be this role model and to help the little girls uh, define and uh, and find themselves you know we had a session this morning on uh, on the influence of boards and how boards can you know, influence the system and with change it. Uh, uh, Isabelle Grometre. Is she was the speaker and, and she was the one who helped us. And one of the program. big solutions is actually to the feminization of boards. So uh, what the work that you're doing is super important. Yeah. Uh, I agree. <laughs> Tony, back at you. We also work a lot at you now with the finance world. This morning there was a session where we tried to help also investors to raise more money around social and environmental issues. And you know there is a big trend right now in finance, it's called ESG finance, environmental social governance finance. And we see that now investors really need to tackle societal problems to be able to raise more money as well. And uh, so my question to you is, you're raising funds for your club and for your activities. Is it for you a challenge or, on the contrary, uh, a tool for you to raise more funds? The, the fact that the Asvel Feminin Club has a purpose, how is it going with the investors? How do, you, how do they I react to I think, uh, I think as investors, uh, we want to have a, a, a purpose in, in where we're going to put our money. Um, me, when I decided to come back in France, I was animated that I wanted to give back to my country give back to the young generation. That was like my first uh, motivation. And as, you, as I grow older, uh, yes, you want to find projects that can have an impact in our world. Uh, one of my last investments with Smart Good Things, the main reason is because we can have an impact uh, on the world, uh, the way we consume uh, everything and where the money uh, is going to go. Uh, because 25% of what we earn, we give it back to different uh, foundation, uh, associations. So that was one of the main reasons I wanted to do it. And so uh, I think investors of today, that's what they look for. They, they want to have a purpose. They're not going to invest in sports just to do sports. I think that if MS didn't create everything she created with Isabel, I don't think we'll have uh, uh, that much people interest to invest in our team if we didn't have all those core values and everything we try to promote uh, to help uh, women grow. And uh, to talk about environment, even me, I'm trying to get more educated and what can we do uh, better and how can I help uh, in that area. Uh, uh, my girl right here, she always like pushing me to, to try to know more and how we can help better on the environment. Push, push him. And so, uh, that's why she was like, when I told her I was coming today doing this, she's like, but you don't know enough about environment. <laughs> it's going to be tough with the questions and stuff like that. <laughs> and I still try to see what I can do better. Uh, two days ago at the academy, I had a, a big meeting with a big association who wanted me an ambassador to invest in environment stuff. So I think as, um, as I get better and better and educate myself, uh, the next step for me is, yeah, how can we help? But what's the value you know, of the association? And like that, uh, I understand why I want to invest in those projects. Well, if you're looking for help, we can definitely do that. You know, I'm, we, I'm in the right a, place. A couple I'm of in the right place. Here that, uh, <laughs> you know, you could invest in. That's for sure. On um, sustainability, Tony, we're at change now here. So we we talk a lot about change. When you came back from the U.S., you came back to France. What was your vision of you know uh, the the change that you wanted to bring in the system? May it be sport or you know, beyond sport as well? What, what, is, what is it that you wanted to bring? Uh, first of all, I, I, just, I just said a little bit in my answer earlier, I just wanted to have a, a, an impact in my country. I'm very grateful for everything that uh, my country gave me. Uh, growing up and coming from a family where we didn't have no money, no nothing, 
like that's something I wanted to give back. I was very blessed with earning a lot of money in sports. We're very lucky that in basketball, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of money. And so the way my parents uh, raised me is you have to give back, you know. And so I started with the, uh, you know, basketball camps and foundation dinners. And, and I wanted to go further uh, with the academy. And okay. that's the legacy that I want to leave, you know, when I'm gone, you know, it's at least I try to do something to, to help the, you know, the young generation and try to help uh, make the world uh, better. Even, uh, you know, the first thing a lot of people say when, the, when we talk about environment is like, oh, it's not going to change what I'm going to do, you know. Uh, but if everybody, you know, a single person, yeah. everybody does a little bit, that's how we can do better. And I admit, I was one of those persons, you know, but like, bah, it's not going to change anything, you know, what I do, you know. And I try to change my mentality, especially since I have like two kids, you know, and the way I want to raise them, it made me more aware uh, what I should do better uh, for the environment. You know, I mean, the, the reason why we're doing what we're doing at Chile now is that everyone has a role to play mm -hmm. in the way we, we shape our societies tomorrow, today and tomorrow. We're all involved, we all have influence. And the fact that people like you, you know, uh, question themselves and, and have their own path in those, in, 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 you know, on, on, on this particular topic, it's really important and you're sending a very important message to you know all the people that are here. I'll give you a funny example. Like yeah. this morning, this morning, I took the train to come for this event, and I had two people came to me. It's like Tony Parker, you take the train. <laughs> <laughs> Not and a I, and, and so I was like, yeah, that's my way to give back to the environment. No more private jets, you know. <laughs> Can I take the train? <laughs> so is that a commitment? <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because it was like. And one end, you they, com they, they the complain. They complain when celebrities take too many private yeah. jets. Yeah. But then, when I was on the train, he looked at me like I was crazy. Like, what you doing on the train? So I thought it was funny. Did you tell him that you are going to change now? So exactly. You had to take the I told him because I'm going to change now. <laughs> I'm glad we're having that influence on you, uh, Tony. <laughs> Marie Sophie, back at you. I got a question. That is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big sports fan. Uh, tennis and many other disciplines and I think in every single discipline there's been this question you know uh, this problem rising around the salary gap between men and women and what's your opinion on, on, on the issue right now do you think it's fair that women are not paid as much as the men in the in the sports world what's, what's your take on this I don't think it's much the question of, of salary, you know, it's more the, the question of access to practice and then maybe the, the media, media treatment, uh, which has to be more equal, you know, to uh, develop attractiveness uh, around uh, women's sports and then this attractiveness will lead to, uh, you know, reduce the, the gap of, um, uh, of salaries. Um, you have to know that, I don't, I don't know if you, you know the stats, but uh, uh, women's sports represent only 5% of um, uh, sports broadcasted on, on TV. So it's not a lot, you know. But since we don't have those TV rights and we, we don't have this, you know, we, we need to find, and that's what we w try to create with Tony, you know, our own economical pro pro model, you know. And, and the new, uh, the emergence of new models uh, through a sports for good, this, you know, you are, we hear it, it's the area of, of the good, you know, but we need to, uh, to uh, also uh, in sports take this way of the good, you know, and this, the emergence of model uh, will lead, you know, women's sports to find uh, um, like uh, his own uh, model and, uh, and after you will reduce the, the gap after that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But to add um, salaries is one thing, but it's people's perception to to women and women's sport. When we bought the team six years ago, nobody was paying to go see the girls play. The old president was like, oh, everything is free. Nobody will pay. Nobody will ever pay for a women's basketball game. That's what he told me when we bought the team. So when we first started, oh yeah, he was laughing at us. When, when we started, I was like, okay, no more free tickets. Everybody's paying two euros. They were like strikes, you know, France, they love to strike. Like yeah. they, were, they were mad, blah, blah, blah. How, how can how dare can you make us pay for a women's game? And I like, you know what? If you want to come to our team, you're going to pay. Because to respect the woman that is working hard 
to create a nice entertainment for you guys, you're going to pay. And so we started with two euros and slowly but surely we're, we're, we're more, ex more and more expensive. At the end of the year, we play in the summer finals against Bourges, who's like um, yeah. the, the reference, you know, in women's basketball. Who and was? Who was? <laughs> yeah, it's us now. It's us now. It's us. Uh, and so the president of the region of basketball, he calls the ticket guy and he's like, I want 20 tickets. And so the guy's like, okay, here's the amount that you have to pay. And like, I will never pay for a moon basketball game. He said, okay. Uh, Tony and Marie-Sophie say, no more free tickets. So if you want to come to the game, he's like, I'm not coming to the game. He's like, fine, I don't care. He's like, I'm the president of the region. He's like, yeah, fine, don't come, don't care. He hangs up, 10 minutes after, he calls back, he takes 40 tickets and pay for everything. <laughs> so it's the, it's the perception that you have to push, you know, to yeah. make sure that people change their, their, their mindset. And six years after, we have 6,000 people packed, everybody paid. And so that's how we can keep our best women now and raise their salaries. I think we're running out of time. So one last question to the two of you. Can you tell us one thing that makes you feel outraged and one thing that makes you feel very optimistic in your work every day? The two of you. Yeah. Three days after winning the championship, it's, it's hard you know, to find something uh, that makes me uh, outraged. Um, because I'm, I'm really happy and grateful, you know, for what we have achieved at the end of this season and uh, being here, you know, on the stage. Uh, just maybe a little anecdote. Um, no, so you saw the game on, uh, on Monday and after the game we were celebrating with uh, the team, the fans and uh, a girl, I didn't know her, she ran into my arms, you know, and she, uh, she told me, uh, she was very emotional and uh, almost crying and she, I'm so happy that you won. Uh, but also I wanted to tell you that I, I'm part of the program Captain of Your Life, you know, and I was, oh, really? Uh, yeah, it's been three months that, you know, I'm following the program. And, um, and she said, you know, you cannot imagine it's been uh, two years that I, I left school. I couldn't go out, you know, I was staying home. My, my, my parents, <laughs> I'm emotional, you know, when I think about that, but my parents, they, they didn't know what to do with me. And she wasn't basketball.